Hi, I'm Andrew Gillis with Sepro Mineral Systems. This is part two of gravity recovery of gold from within grinding circuits. In this video, we'll be walking through the parameters that go into the model for predicting gravity recovery. Now, this is useful for two reasons. One is that it gives you a better understanding of the model and when you do a gravity recoverable gold test, and get an answer for how much gravity recovery you should expect in a plant. Um, it gives you an understanding of where that's coming from, but more so it gives you an understanding of the factors that go into gravity recovery from a milling circuit. And operators can look at each of these factors in turn, optimize them to improve overall gravity recovery in a plant. So let's get started. So again, we're looking at the technical paper, gravity recovery of gold from within grinding circuits. And again, as I mentioned in the first video, the organization's a bit different than perhaps I would have laid it out. So we're gonna jump around a little bit, but we're going to start here and just talk about first, identi first identify the different parts of a uh, milling circuit when it includes gravity circuit. So you've got your ball mill that's doing the milling You've got a pump that's pumping to the cyclone. And I mean, feed may enter, feed may enter here. Often it does. Feed may also just enter here into the start of the ball mill, but that's not really important to the, to the model here. We've got our cyclone for size separation, and then we've got our gravity circuit. The placement of the gravity circuit can either be on cyclone feed or here on cyclone underflow. I'd say this has been the uh, traditional location in the underflow. And I'd say this is more of the modern location for the gravity circuit. And we'll get into that in the subsequent video on the considerations, the practical considerations for gravity circuit installation. But right now we're just identifying that these are the things that work together in the circuit and they all have an impact on gravity recovery. So let's have a look at the factors that affect gravity recovery. So we've got the overall gravity recoverable content of the ore. That's one number. This is how much GRG, I'm going to refer to gravity recoverable gold as GRG from now on, how much GRG is actually in the ore. Then a related parameter is the size distribution of GRG. So you may have a situation where, hey, we've got 50% GRG and it's all 150 micron, or we've got the same amount and it's all 10 micron. And those have a very big difference when it comes to overall gravity recovery. Then we've got the recovery efficiency of the circuit. And that's mostly about the gravity concentrator and the screen associated with it. So the efficiency can be reduced by inefficient screening and it can be reduced by inefficient operation of the gravity concentrator. And in this case, we're talking about centrifugal concentrators. Cyclone efficiency, this is likely, to be totally honest, the most important parameter in a gravity circuit, and we'll get into that in a bit more detail. We've got the fraction of circulating load treated by the gravity concentrator, and these two, uh, actually these three, are all related to one another and affect one another. Then a bit more of a minor consideration, but still meaningful. The amount of GRG converted to non-GRG in the grinding mill. So this has to do with flattening of gold, um, having it uh, stick on to mill liners, grinding media. Then we've got the gravity section or you know gravity circuit availability. And then ultimately we've got the gold room efficiency. So you've recovered the gold through the gravity concentrator. It goes to the gold room and then that's going to have uh, what happens there is going to have an impact on global gold recovery as well. So let's take a look at the GRG test. So the GRG test is going to give you information about the total GRG content in the ore and the size distribution of the GRG. So how do we get that? 
if we, so you'll see here, there's a multi-stage test. We've got uh, nominal cr course crush. We've got a first gravity concentration step. Then we've got a grinding step, then a second gravity concentration step and a grinding step and a third gravity concentration step. So why does this, why do we do this? So if we were only going to do, let's say this part, the final grind, so the final grind size and a gravity concentration step. At that point, all we would get is this, the gravity recoverable gold content of the ore at this nominal grind size, which is fine. But with only that, we lack information about the size distribution of the GRG. We'd be missing out on this information here, which is very important to the modeling of the circuit. So when we do the three steps, we actually build a release curve that gives us information about the size distribution of the GRG. This can also be done with mineralogy, a mineralogical study. It's more theoretical and less empirical because you know you you can't always be 100 percent confident about how the gold will grind at a given size it can tell you the size of the particles but it won't necessarily tell you whether or not they're actually going to get released and separated at these various size ranges both are both are very useful um, but ultimately if we're trying to predict gravity recovery we want to be doing a grg test so what does that give us this gives us the size distribution of the GRG. And, you know, here's just an example where we're seeing the different um, amounts of GRG at different size ranges. And we use this information. So this information here to then make a partition curve that talks about or that informs us about how the cyclone is going to perform at retaining gold and retaining particles. So up here we had cyclone efficiency defined by the GRG partition curve. So that's what we're talking about right now is will the cyclone keep the gold in the circuit at the designed cut point? So in this case, we see the ore partition curve here. We've got the gold partition curve here. So let's say we're cutting at 100 micron, you know, right here. Well, actually, sorry, this is going to be 110 micron. My apologies. Sorry, 110 micron, P80 of 110 here. So we're going to get... 80% of the ore partitioned, and it looks like in this case, basically 100% of the gold retained in the underflow or, you know, extremely close to it. This could be 97, 98, 99, but it's, it's way up there. If our gold looked different, let's say it was all very, very, very fine. This, parti this gold partition curve, you know, could look something like this, for example. And now, hey, now we're only retaining... 85 or 90% of the gold in the grinding circuit. As I said, this is probably one of the most important parameters because if you had 100% gold retention in the grinding circuit and nothing got lost, then it really wouldn't matter how efficient the gravity concentrator is. Then all you're up against is gold getting smeared onto grinding media, mill liners, hanging up in pump boxes, but it's trapped there in the circuit. Now the paper says this effect is minor, um, as more than 98% of GRG entering the mill remains gravity recoverable after grinding. Um, but you know, I'm gonna take exception to that a little bit because 2% GRG can be a lot if you've got a high GRG ore and you certainly don't wanna lose that. Um, so having, uh, an efficient gravity circuit is definitely an important part of that. And there's a graph down here that just illustrates this a little bit better when we have the 
gold recovery based on cyclone efficiency. And this is also modeled, you know, we're assuming a particular uh, partition curve here for the gold and we can model that and see what happens at different cyclone efficiencies. So a 2% difference in cyclone efficiency actually for the gold retention actually does have a substantial difference um, on overall gold recovery in the circuit. So this is one of the reasons that, you know, one of the best things an operator can do to improve the gravity circuit is make sure that the cyclones are functioning very efficiently um, when it comes to gold recovery. So let's look next at the recovery efficiency of the gravity circuit. So here we've got um, a couple factors. The paper indicates um, generally gravity concerts operate with relatively low stage recoveries. Now this is accurate, but this is by, I'm not gonna say by design, but, by, but intentionally based on the operation. So we can make a gravity concentrator very, very efficient by, let's just say this is a, say we've got a gravity concentrator here. If we keep the loading, so the throughput of the machine low, and we have a very thin film going up the wall, we can get quite high single stage efficiency and recovery in a, in a single pass. However, in grinding circuits, we tend to just hammer the capacity of these things. So we've got a huge film thickness, efficiency goes down, but overall gold unit production goes up because we're putting, the throughput is increasing faster. So throughput, throughput, is going up way faster than recovery is going down. So overall, the gold units produced go up and because the cyclone, as long as the cyclone's operating efficiently, because the cyclone's returning the gold back to the circuit, it doesn't matter so much that the overall recovery is low because we're, we're keeping the gold in the circuit with our very efficient cyclones, right? And then we're still picking it up with some efficiency in the concentrator. So as long as the cyclones are operating well, the concentrator unit efficiency is less important. But if cyclones are operating poorly, it becomes extremely important. And it also affects what we see here. We talk about the fraction of the cyclone feed treated by the gravity circuit. As this goes up, then the cyclone efficiency becomes less important because we have more opportunity to capture the particles in the gravity circuit rather than having them. So for example, if we're only treating 10% of the circulating load, 90% of the material is bypassing the gravity circuit and only 10 is going here. So chances are, you know, a particle is going to go around the circuit a number of times without seeing the gravity concentrator and just based on the cyclone mm -hmm. efficiency will eventually leave. However, if we're treating a large portion of it, then there's less opportunity for that cyclone efficiency to impact it. So just based on the reality of circuit operation, this is one of the factors that would lead somebody to install more gravity capacity rather than less, especially if there's a lot of GRG in the circuit to try to narrow this gap and just make sure that GRG is maximized. So what do we have left? Just talked about the fraction of circulated load treated by the, treated by the gravity concentrator. Uh, we talked about the amount of GRG converted to non-GRG. Gravity section availability. So this is where we get into more practical considerations um, of operation. If you have a machine that's not available, um, you know, it's, it's similar to going down this path and having less capacity. So it means the concentrator's offline, which could be due to maintenance. It also could be due to uh, rinse time. So these concentrators have to rinse out periodically. If you have a long rinse cycle, 
you're going to have material bypassing and there's more opportunity for it to leave the circuit. If you have a short rinse time and the machine's online, then you'll be able to um, get higher recovery into the gravity circuit. And then we have gold room efficiency. This is something we'll talk more about in the practical considerations uh, video. There are different ways to recover gravity or to process gravity concentrate and upgrade the gold. And each of those has its own efficiency and impact on the overall circuit. So hopefully that has provided everybody with a better understanding of the factors that go into circuit operation. And we'll dig into the practical considerations in the next video, um, just talking about how people can actually impact uh, a number of these factors, a number of the operational factors. So not necessarily the, you know, the GRG content is what it is. And so is the size distribution, but a lot of these other factors can be impacted by operators and can be improved and worked on and monitored. So thanks very much. Uh, any other questions, comments, observations, please get a hold of us, minerals.seprosystems.com. Always happy to talk about gold recovery and mineral processing. Thanks very much for watching.